talk to the day. Beautiful people talk to the day. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm running a few minutes behind today. Tiffany, hey girl. Hey, Alicia, y'all. But trouble, y'all. Y'all been trouble. Y'all, this whole one hour daylight saving time is kicking my butt. See, because what's happening is I'm getting, I don't know, throughout the day I get big spurts of energy. Then I can't go to sleep. I can't, like, last night I didn't go to sleep till after one. Like, I was really trying to go to sleep. And then I couldn't wake up. Oh, my gosh. My body still feel like it's about to send a posse out after you. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Tiffany. Okay, let me get started real quick. Drink this water. I feel like something's stuck in my throat. Okay. Whew. Okay. Body's still adjusting. Guys, I'm on day 23. 23 water on 20 day 23 water only fast. I'd be so glad when I get to the 40 so I can put some nutrition in my body. I mean, my body is fine. It's just, you know, still cleansing itself or whatever. But um I don't know, it's good. I like the changes that I see. Saba Salama. Saba Salama Alicia Ya. Okay, y'all. Today it is Wednesday, day 94, March the 11th, 2021, 2 Samuel 16, 17, and 18. All right, I ain't gonna run my mouth today, y'all, because I'm already late. 2 Samuel chapter 16. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses saddled, and upon them 200 loaves of bread and 100 bunches of raisin and 100 summer fruits and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, what meanest thou by these? And Zebul said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine that such be as faint in the wilderness may drink it. And the king said, Where is thy master's son? And Zebul said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem, for he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Zebul, Behold, thine are all that pertain unto Mephibosheth. And Zebul said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, O Lord, O King, my Lord, O King. <clears throat> and when the king, and when King David came to Bahurim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David and all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man and thou man of Belial. Yahuwah hath returned thee upon all the blood of the house of Saul in whose stead thou hast reigned. And Yahuwah hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah? So let him curse, because Jehua hath said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore thou hast done so? And David said to Abishai and all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth out of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? <clears throat> let him alone. Let him curse, for Yahuwah hath bidden him. It may be that Yahuwah will look on my affliction, and that Yahuwah will requite, will requite me good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along on the hillside over against him, and cursed as he went, and threw stones at him, and cast dust. And the king and all the people that were with him became weary, <clears throat> became weary and refreshed themselves there. And Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem. And a he, a he, what, a he, a he fell with him. And it came to pass when Hushai the archite, David's friend, was coming to Absalom, that Hushai said unto Absalom, Yah save the king, Yah save the king. And Absalom said to Hushai, is this thy kindness to thy friend? Why wouldest thou not with thy friend? And who shall say unto Absalom, Nay, but whom Yahuwah and his people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with him will I abide. 
And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? As I have served thy, in thy father's presence, so I will be in thy presence. Then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Give counsel among you what we shall do. And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Going unto thy father's concubines, which he hath left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art arbiter of thy father. <clears throat> then the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all of Israel. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was if a man had inquired at the oracle of Yahuwah. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. He was giving Absalom some bum uh, advice. <clears throat> Second Samuel chapter 17. Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, <clears throat> Let me now choose out 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night, and I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed, and I will make him afraid, and all the people that are with him shall flee, and I will smite the king only. And I will bring back all the people unto thee, and the man whom thou seekest is as if all returned, so all the people shall be in peace. And the saying pleased Absalom well, and all the elders of Israel. Then said Absalom, Call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he hath said. And when Hushai was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithophel hath also spoken after this manner. Shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. And Hushai said unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahithophel hath given is not good at this time. For said Hushai, Thou knowest that thy father and his men, that they be mighty men, and they be chafed in their minds as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field and thy father is a man of war and will not lodge with the people behold he is hid now in some pit or in some other place and it will come to pass when some of them be overthrown at the first that whosoever heareth it will say there is a slaughter among the people that follow absalom and he also that is valiant whose heart is as the heart of a lion shall utterly melt for all israel knoweth that thy father is a mighty man and they which be with him are valiant men. Therefore I counsel that all of Israel be generally gathered to gathered unto thee. From Dan even to Beersheba, as the sand that is by the sea for multitude, that thou go to battle with thine own person. So shall we come upon him in some place where he shall be found, and we will light upon him as the dew falleth on the ground. And of him and all the men that are with him, there shall not be so much left as one. Moreover, if he be gotten into the city, then shall all Israel bring ropes to that city, and we will draw it into the river until there be not one small stone found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than that of the counsel of Ahithophel. For Yahuwah hath appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that Yahuwah might bring evil upon Absalom. Then said Hushai unto Zadok and to Abathar the priest, Thus and thus did Ahithophel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. Now therefore send quickly, and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over. Lest the king be swallowed up and all the people that are with him. Now Jonathan and Ahimaaz stayed in Rogel, that they might not be seen to come into the city. And a wench went and told them, and they went and told King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom, but they both, but they went both of them away quickly and came to a man's house in Bahurim, which had a well in his court, whither they went down. And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread, and spread ground corn thereon, <clears throat> and the thing was not known. And when Absalom's, ser Absalom's servants came to the woman to the house, they said, Where is Ahimaaz and Jonathan? And the woman said unto them, They be going over the brook of water. And when they had sought, they could not find them. They returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after they were departed that they came up out of the well and went and told King David and said unto David, Arise and pass quickly over the water, for thus hath Ahithophel counsel against you. Then David arose and all the people that were with him, and they passed over the Jordan by the morning like there lacked not one of them that was not going over the Jordan. And when Ahithophel <clears throat> saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house. 
to his city and he put his household in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. Then David came to Mahanaim and Absalom passed over Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Joab, which Amasa was a man's son whose name was Ithra, an Israelite that went into Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister of Zariah, Joab's mother. So Israel and Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead. <clears throat> and it came to pass when David was come to Mahanaim that Shobi, the son of Nahash, of Rabbah, of the children of Ammon, <clears throat> and Machir, the son of Amiel, of Lodabar, and Barzillai, <clears throat> the Gilead, the Gilead of Rogelim, bought beds and basins and earthen vessels and wheat and barley and flour and parched corn <clears throat> and beans and lentils and parched pulse and honey and butter and sheep and cheese of kind for David and for the people that were with him to eat. For they said, the people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. Excuse me. Second <clears throat> Samuel chapter 18, last chapter for the day. <clears throat> and David numbered the people that were with him and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them and David sent forth and David sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of Joab and a third part under the hand of Abishai the son of Zariah Joab's brother and a third part under the hand of Ittai, the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth, for if we flee away, <clears throat> they will not care for us. Neither if half of us die, they will care for us. But now thou art worth ten thousand of us. Therefore now it is better that thou secure, secure us out of the city. And the king said unto him, What seemeth? you best I will do. And the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. And the king commanded Joab and, Ab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all the people heard the king when he gave the captain's charge concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field against Israel and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David <clears throat> and there was a great slaughter that day of 20,000 men for the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country and the wood devoured more people that day than a sword devoured and Absalom met the servants of David and Absalom rode upon the mule and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, and his head caught hold of an oak, and he was taken up between heaven and earth, and the mule was under him, and the mule that was under him went away. And a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. And Joab said unto the man that told him, And behold, thou sawest him, and why didst thou not smite him there to the ground? And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. And the man said, said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, yet I would not put forth my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing the king charged thee, and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Beware that none touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise I should have wrought falsehood against my own life. For there is no matter hid from the king. And thou thyself wouldest have, wouldest have set thyself against me. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom, while yet he was alive in the midst of the oak. And ten young men that bear Joab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. And Joab blew a trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel. For Joab held back the people, and they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood, and laid a very great heap of stones upon him, and all of Israel fled, every one to his tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself a pillar, which is in the king's dale, for he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name, and it is called unto this day Absalom's place. Then said Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, let me now run, 
and bear the king tidings, how that Yahuwah hath avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day. But this day thou shalt bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. Then said Joab to Cushi, Go tell the king what thou hast seen. And Cushi bowed himself unto Joab and ran. <clears throat> Then said Ahimaaz the son of Zadok yet again to Joab, But howsoever, let me, I pray thee, also run after Cushi. And Joab said, Wherefore wilt thou run, my son, seeing that thou hast no tidings ready? But howsoever, he said, Let me run. And he said unto him, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain and overran Cushi. And David sat between the two gates. And the watchman went up over the roof of the gate unto the wall and lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, a man running alone. And the watchman cried and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came apace and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running. And the watchman called unto the porter and said, Behold, another man is running alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, Methinketh the running of the foremost, foremost is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man and cometh with good and cometh with good tidings. And Ahimaaz called and said unto the king, All is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king and said, Blessed be Yahuwah, thy God, which hath delivered the men up to thee that lifted up their hand against my lord the king. And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimaaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant and me thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. And the king said unto him, Turn aside and stand here. And he turned aside and stood still. And behold, Cushi came. And Cushi said, Tidings, my lord the king, for you who hath avenged thee this day of all them that rose up against thee. <clears throat> and the king said unto Cushi, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushi answered, The enemies of my lord the king and all that rise up against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is. And the king was moved much and went up into his chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went thus, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. And that, my beautiful people, is our reading for today. So we found out that two of these gentlemen were hung. The first one hung himself because he knew that um he went home, got his affairs in order because he knew that the king or the king's men would surely have put him to death because what he had did. So he went home, got his affairs in order, then they said he hung himself. And then the second man, the king's son, the young man Absalom, um, he got caught up in a tree by his long, beautiful hair, and he hung there. And Joab and his men, when they found out he was still alive, hanging from the tree, they went and put daggers in his heart and buried him. They threw him in a pit and threw rocks over him. What a way to go, being a king's son. You know, but Absalom, he was doing some shady stuff. Not saying that he deserved it, but Yahuwah also said that a sword would never leave King David's house, right? So with that being said, beautiful people, I hope you enjoyed the reading for the day. It is Wednesday, March 11, 2020, day 94. We were at 2 Samuel 16, 17, and 18. If you missed it, if you rewind, I'll go back and read it. All right, y'all, so with that being said, let me bless you so you can get about your day. And it comes from Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. May Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace, his shalom, his wholeness in every area of our life. All right, y'all, I love you, and I will see you in the morning. Peace.